Good morning. Today we're looking at section three, the chain rule of chapter four, symbolic differentiation of business calculus with Excel. The chain rule lets us take the derivative of a composition of function. We're continuing the project of this chapter, which is to build rules for symbolic derivatives. We're going to state a rule, give examples of computation, and provide some justification. So far in the two previous sections, we've given a number of rules. A derivative of a power of a function, the derivative of an exponent, basic exponential function, the derivative of an exponential function where e is not the base, the derivative of the natural logarithm, what happens if you multiply a function by a constant, you multiply the derivative by the same constant, if you add or subtract two functions, their derivatives add or subtract. If you multiply, we have a rule that it's f prime g plus f g prime. And for the quotient, it becomes the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom square. In this section, we're looking at the chain rule, the derivative of a composition of f composed with g. When we look at the chain rule in prime notation, the derivative of f of g of x is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. In the fractional notation, if y is g of x and f is f of y, so z is f of g of x, then dz dx is dz dy times dy dx. You could cancel the fractions it sets up to do that. Some key examples we'll look at are linear functions, where we'll see the derivative of the composition as a product of derivatives, and power functions, which make it clear that you need to evaluate at g of x. We'll need to do a care of steps. So to look at examples, I'm going to start with f of x equals 3x plus 5, and g of x equals 4x plus 7, f of g of x is 3 times 4x plus 7 plus 5, which is 12x plus 21 plus 5, which is 12x plus 26. f prime of x is 3, f prime I'm of g of x. Everywhere I see an x, I replace by g of x. There are no x's, so that's still 3. g prime of x is equal to 4. So f prime of g of x times g prime of x is 4 times 3, which is 12. And Looking at the composition, if I take f of g of x and its prime, I'm also going to get 12. So I get the same answer in either direction. And so I look at this and see that the chain rule works for linear functions. It's worthwhile to do this in a general linear case. If I start at f of x equals ax plus b and g of x is cx plus d, then f of g of x is a times cx plus d plus b, which is acx plus ad plus b, and f of g of x prime this is a linear function, so it's just the coefficient, it's ac. f prime of x is a, g prime of x is c, f prime of g of x is still a. And so we notice that the derivative of the composition looks like a product of the two. It's now worthwhile to look at power examples. We're going to let f of x equal x cubed and g of x 
equals x to the fourth f of g of x is x to the fourth cubed, which is x to the twelfth. f of x, or f prime of x, is 3x squared. f prime of g of x, everywhere I see an x, I replace it by g of x, is going to be 3 times x to the fourth squared which will equal 3x to the 8th. g prime of x is going to be 4x cubed. So f prime of g of x times g prime of x is 3x to the 8th times 4x cubed, which is 12x to the 11th and f of g of x, we said that was x to the 12th, the derivative of that is 12x to the 11th. So I'm getting the same answer both ways. The second example is particularly useful. The power example to verify form of the chain rule. Common mistake students make is they do f prime of x times g prime of x, not f prime of g of x. And to make sure that you have your steps right, it's useful to use functions that, like this, we have as a general rule, test rules, with functions, you can do both ways. So we did the composition and took the derivative, or we used the chain rule instead of doing the composition of function. It's useful to look at some examples where composition doesn't work, where composition first is very hard. And so I'm going to look at f of g of x to be x cubed plus 4x plus 7 to the 23rd power. Now, in theory, I could do this by multiplying out what is x cubed plus 4x plus 7 to the 23rd power and making the polynomial and taking the derivative. That would be really hard and a pain to do. Instead, what I'm going to do is say that f of x is x to the 23rd, and g of x is x cubed plus 4x plus 7. f prime of x is 23 x to the 22nd. g prime of x is 3 x squared plus 4. f prime of g of x, everywhere where I have an x, I replace it by g of x. That's 23 g of x to the 22nd power, which is 23 times x cubed plus 4x plus 7 to the 22nd power. And so if we make this h of x, h prime of x is f prime of g of x times g prime of x, which is 23 times x cubed plus 4x plus 7 to the 22nd times 3x squared plus 4, and that gives me my answer. Warning, make sure to use parentheses. It's a common student mistake 
not to use the parentheses and run into trouble. Let me do a couple more examples. I'm going to look at h of x equals 1.06 to the 2x plus 5. I want to rewrite that as f of g of x, where f and g are nicer functions that I know how to do the derivative of. And what I'm going to say is that f of x is 1.06 to the x, and g of x is equal to 2x plus 5. Well, g prime of x is equal to 2, and f prime of x is equal to natural logarithm of 1.06 times 1.06 to the x. f prime of g of x is the natural logarithm of 1.06 times 1.06 to the g of x and I'm going to do that and say I replace g of x by 2x plus 5 by the value of g of x. So h prime of x is the natural logarithm of 1.06 times 1.06 to the 2x plus 5 times 2. To do another example, I'm going to look at h of x is equal to 4x cubed plus 5 quantity squared. I want to break that down and make this f of g of x because I don't have a rule that talks about a polynomial raised to a power. I want to break it down and say, I'd like to compose this as function that I already know rules for. Well, I'm going to say that f of x is x squared, and g of x is 4x cubed plus 5. So f prime of x is 2x, f prime of g of x is 2 times 4x cubed plus 5. g prime of x is 12x squared. And so h prime of x is 2 times 4x squared plus 5 times 12x squared. This is a problem that if I wanted to, I could work it out both ways. It's tedious, but it's easier to say, this looks like a chain rule problem, because when I read it, it's the square of 4x cubed plus 3 of, in reading, typically means composition. And the composition is going to be where we're using the chain rule. A couple of other kinds of problems that will show up in the homework. They're what I refer to as chart problems. And so I'm going to look at x, f of x, g of x, f prime of x, g prime of x. And I'm going to make a chart where my numbers run from 1 to 5. And I just fill in numbers 2, 4, 1, 3, 5, 3, 1, 4, 5, 2, 5, 2, 3, 4, 1, 4, 5, 2, 1, 3. 
I've basically just filled them in in a kind of random fashion. And now if I ask you about h of x equals f of g of x, find h prime of 3. Well, h prime of 3 is going to be f prime of g of 3 times g prime of 3. Looking at that, f prime g of 3 was 4, and g prime of 3 was 2. f prime of 4 is still 4, and so this answer was 8. This is a kind of problem that you actually have to know the rule because you can't do it by doing substitution or by doing any way around it. If I wanted to do a similar problem to this, for example, if I wanted to say h of x equals f of x times g of x, and said find h prime h prime of 5 is f prime of 5 times g of 5 plus f of 5 times g prime of 5. Well, f prime of 5 is 1. g of 5 is 2. f of 5 is 5, and g prime of 5 is 3. And so this is 17. And so this is a kind of problem that you have to know the rules and you simply look it up on the chart. You'll notice there are problems like this in the homework. There'll be problems like this on quizzes and tests. The other kind of problem this will show up is composition of processes so I start with raw material so I start with widgets from widgets I get goop from goop I get stuff and we have our rule that goop of widgets equals three widgets plus five. That tells us the derivative of goop with respect to widgets is equal to three. And stuff of goop equals 5 group minus 7. The derivative of group and the derivative of stuff with respect to group is 5. But what I'm really interested in is I want to know what I'm really interested in is I want to know the derivative of stuff with respect to widgets and that's going to be the derivative of stuff with respect to goop times the derivative of goop with respect to widgets. In fractional notation, those cancel. And what I'll get is this is 3 times 5, which is 15. That again, composition is I do one thing and then I do something to the result of that. And so this gives an example of what composition is and where I'd want to use the chain rule, where I simply have said that I produce goop from widgets and stuff from goop. 
I want to know what about the process of doing stuff from widgets. That's an example of the chain rule. And that's it for today.